Robert was an improvement on your father, to be sure. There have been few rulers in history as cruel as the Mad King. Hello, my sweet summer children. I'm back with some juice to get you through the long night. So before I get started into the Mad King's madness, I would like to invite all of you to join my Discord server. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a live chat. So we have a general chat, a spoilers chat, a, a YouTube chat, all kinds of chats. So if you want to join the Discord and talk to me and your fellow Game of Thrones fans, then all you have to do is click the link in the description box. Anyway, so I like to read about history and watch different history documentaries and all that nerdy stuff. And throughout history, there have been several mad kings. In some cases, they really were batshit crazy, but in others, they actually weren't crazy. They were just different than the norm. And history wrote them as they saw fit. So I started to question the heel of Game of Thrones, the match that lit Robert's Rebellion. It started me to question if the Mad King was really mad, or was there something else going on entirely? Something that's been smothered and diluted by the victors who wrote the histories. And if the Mad King really was mad, what made him go crazy or was he just always crazy? If you've looked at the big book, The World of Ice and Fire, you will see that this book is written in the perspective of a maester. And this maester is specifically writing this book for Joffrey and then Tommen. So he's not going to say truths that would be offensive to House Lannister or to House Baratheon, beings that this book is written for them. So we have to take all of this into consideration when we're trying to decide if the Mad King was really mad. And if we find that he was mad, then what caused him to lose his shit? Well, let's take a deeper look at the Mad King. Because in my opinion, some things just are not adding up. Aerys Targaryen, the second of his name, was but 18 years of age when he ascended the Iron Throne in 262 AC. Upon the death of his father, Jaehaerys, after little more than three years of rule. A handsome youth, Aerys had fought gallantly in the Stepstones during the War of the Nine Penny Kings. Though not the most diligent of princes nor the most intelligent, he had an undeniable charm that won him many friends. He was also vain, proud, and changeable, traits that made him easy prey for flatterers and lickspittles. But these flaws were not immediately apparent to most at the time of his accession. Not even the wisest could have known that Aerys II would in time be known as the Mad King, nor that his reign would ultimately put an end to near three centuries of Targaryen rule in Westeros. This quote says not even the wisest would have known that Aerys Targaryen would later end up a Mad King. So how is it that he ended up written this way in all of the histories or remembered this way by the people who served him? From what I'm reading, most of Aerys' reign was peaceful and he was a good king until the final quarter of his reign. So what happened? Where did it go wrong? Aerys was present at the tragedy of Summerhall. This is where his son Rhaegar was born. He witnessed his grandfather, uncle, and other people burn to death. His father then ascended the throne and only reigned for three years before dying of a short illness. Aerys followed his father on the throne at the age of 18. His father's court had been made up largely of older, seasoned men, many of whom had also served during the reign of King Aegon V. Aerys II dismissed them one and all, replacing them with lords of his own generation. Most notably, he retired the aged and exceedingly cautious hand Edgar Sloane and named in his place Sir Tywin Lannister, the heir to Castle Rock. At 20 years of age, Sir Tywin thus became the youngest hand in the history of the Seven Kingdoms. Many maesters to this day insist that his appointment was the wisest thing that Aerys the Wise ever did. So the realm is prospering, mainly due to Tywin, but the young king was not being cruel. Aerys enjoyed balls and music and poetry and all the splendor that court had to offer, but ruling the realm bored him. 
Ares would make these plans, almost impossible plans, making the Titan kneel, growing flowers in the deserts of Dorne, to build a city completely out of white marble. But he also has another plan, which is very interesting, given the circumstances of where we are now in the story. In 264 AC, a visit to King's Landing by Lord Rickard Stark of Winterfell awakened his interest in the North, and he hatched a plan to build a new wall a hundred leagues north of the existing one, and claim all the lands between. So did Aerys want to build another wall because it was just the most ridiculous thing to do, or did he have a suspicion that something was coming? This could be just a flight of fancy by a bored king, or it could be something else, and we will get back to that in a minute. One of the things the Mad King is known for the most is his lust for women. Aerys Targaryen and Tywin Lannister made for an unlikely partnership, it must be said. The young king was lively and active in the early years of his reign. He loved music, dancing, and masked balls, and was exceedingly fond of young women, filling his court with fair maidens from every corner of the realm. Some say he had as many mistresses as his ancestor, Aegon the Unworthy, a most unlikely assertion, given all we know of that monarch. Unlike Aegon the Unworthy, however, Aerys II always seemed to lose interest in his lovers quickly. Many lasted no longer than a fortnight, and few as long as half a year. This quote and the comparison between Aegon the Unworthy to Aerys Targaryen brings me to a historical comparison from the real world. This could be where George got his inspiration. Henry VIII. Henry VIII and Ares seem to have a lot in common. If you're not familiar with Henry VIII, he was a young king whose reign was promising, and then his fondness of women brought him down. He had one wife killed after another, and his obsession with producing a male heir drove him crazy. But many people think that's not what really happened. A lot of people believe he was actually driven crazy by syphilis. He passed the syphilis to his wives, causing them to have multiple miscarriages and stillbirths, and that's why he could never have the heir that he wanted. By 270 AC, he had decided that the queen was being unfaithful to him. The gods will not suffer a bastard to sit the Iron Throne, he told his small council. None of Rayella's stillbirths, miscarriages, or dead princes had been his, the king proclaimed. Thereafter, he forbade the queen to leave the confines of Magor's Holdfast and decreed that two septas would henceforth share her bed every night to see that she remains true to her vows. This is very similar to what Henry VIII did to his wives, except Henry VIII was even more extreme. When you read the histories of the Reign of Dragons, most of the kings or princes or Targaryens that were called mad or unstable or what have you, they showed signs of it early on. It is said that Magor the Cruel butchered a cat at the age of three and at the age of eight he butchered a horse that kicked him and slashed a stable boy's face off. Arian Brightflame, who was the Mad King's uncle, he's the one that thought if he drank wildfire that he would somehow transform into a dragon. He was always mad. He was always crazy. He threw Egg's cat down a well and as a child he visited Egg's bedroom and put a knife up to his private parts and taunted him about removing them so Egg could be his sister for him to marry. It doesn't seem this way with Ares. He wasn't always this way. Ares's mental state seemed to rot over time, maybe from syphilis or a similar disease that exists in Westeros, a sexually transmitted pox. Maybe it just runs in the blood and Targaryens just always dance too close to madness. Or maybe it was something else, dreams, dragon dreams, or dreams sent by the Three-Eyed Raven, Blood Raven. It could even be said that Egg himself was driven to madness. He was consumed by the search for dragons, which led to the tragedy at Summerhall. But the songs love Egg. He was indeed touched by madness in his reign's fourth quarter. If the tales are to be believed, which is much like Eris, Eris seems to be touched by madness in his fourth quarter. So after years and years of miscarriages, 
stillborn Princess Shayna, a son, Prince Dayron, that only lived a half a year, another stillborn, another miscarriage, then Prince Aegon being born two months early and dying, Ares began to break down. His wife is having multiple miscarriages and multiple stillbirths and multiple children that are dying and sickly. Because of this, his mental health seems like it's declining. He stopped listening to Tywin and he started to do exactly the exact opposite of whatever Tywin advised him to do. Aerys hated that the realm whispered that it was not Aerys but Tywin who ruled the Seven Kingdoms. Tywin was the true king. Sir Ilan Payne had been overheard saying something similar and that's why today he doesn't have a tongue because Aerys had it torn out with hot pincers. Because of this, Tywin and Aerys' relationship starts to spiral out of control. We know for a fact that the Lannisters are ambitious. They always have been. We also know they easily forget their place in the world. It's not unlikely that Tywin was trying to rule the realm. We know he always had those ambitions for his daughter and for his son and for himself. So did Aerys have a reason to be mad at Tywin? Maybe. He feels he needs to humble Tywin and put him back in his place. So Tywin hosts an anniversary tourney for the Mad King. Lady Joanna comes and the Mad King humiliates her and Tywin. Tywin tries to resign and the Mad King refuses to let him resign. When Joanna died, Aerys made comments that it was to teach Tywin humility. Tywin got wind of it, and all the love that Tywin and Aerys had once shared was gone. The March of King's Madness seemed to abate for a time in 274 AC, when Queen Rhaella gave birth to a son. So profound was his grace's joy that it seemed to restore him to his old self once again. But Prince Jaehaerys died later that same year, plunging Aerys into despair. In his black rage, he decided the babe's wet nurse was to blame and had the woman beheaded. Not long after, in a change of hearts, Eris announced that Jaehaerys had been poisoned by his own mistress, the pretty young daughter of one of his household knights. The king had the girl and all her kin tortured to death. During the course of their torment, it is recorded all confessed to the murder, though the details of their confessions were greatly at odds. Afterward, King Aerys fasted for a fortnight and made a walk of repentance across the city to the Great Sept to pray with the High Septon. On his return, his grace announced that henceforth he would sleep only with his lawful wife, Queen Rhaella. If the chronicles can be believed, Aerys remained true to this vow, losing all interest in the charms of women from that day in 275 AC. This was the first truly mad act of the Mad King, but was it madness? Was he insane or did he have reasons to believe exactly what he thought? Either way, I think this was an act of rage and grief and Viserys was born one year later. The birth of Prince Viserys only seemed to make Aerys II more fearful and obsessive. Though the new young princeling seemed healthy enough, the king was terrified lest he suffered the same fate as his brothers. Kingsguard's knights were commanded to stand over him night and day to see that no one touched the boy without the king's leave. Even the queen herself was forbidden to be alone with the infant. When her milk dried up, Eris insisted on having his own food taster suckle at the tits of the prince's wet nurse to ascertain that the woman had not smeared poison on her nipples. The Defiance of Duskendale was basically where Eris was kidnapped and held hostage at Duskendale in the dungeons for six months. Lord Dennis refused to pay taxes and then invited King Eris to Duskendale allegedly to explain his reasoning. Eris went with a small escort and was captured. So Sir Barristan managed to sneak in and save the king from his torment, but Eris went the fuck off once he got out of there. He basically slaughtered everyone involved and their families. He spared only Sir Dantos at Sir Barristan's request. So would you consider that an act of a mad king or is that just what kings do when you kidnap them? Was Aegon the Conqueror considered mad when he burned Harrenhal and roasted everyone inside it? 
Maybe. So Ares deteriorated fast. It's said that the defiance of Duskendale shattered all of his sanity. In the wake of Duskendale, the king also began to display signs of an ever-increasing obsession with Dragonfire, similar to which had haunted several of his forebears. Lord Darkling would never have dared defy him if he had been a dragon rider. Ares reasoned. His attempts to bring forth dragons from eggs found in the depths of Dragonstone, some so old that they had turned to stone, yielded naught. However, frustrated, Ares turned to the wisdoms of the ancient guild of alchemists who knew the secret of producing the volatile jade green substance known as wildfire, said to be a close cousin to Dragonflame. The pyromancers became a regular fixture at his court as the king's fascination with fire grew. By 280 AC, Aerys II had taken to burning traitors, murderers, and plotters rather than hanging or beheading them. The king seemed to take great pleasure in these fiery executions, which were presided over by Wisdom Rossart, the Grand Master of the Guild of Alchemists. So much so that he granted Rossart the title of Lord and gave him a seat upon the small council. His grace's growing madness had become unmistakable by that time. From dawn to the wall, men had begun to refer to Eris II as the Mad King. Eris was so paranoid that he refused to leave the Red Keep. He didn't even attend his own son's wedding. What Eris is the most known for is inducting Jaime Lannister into the King's Guard just to spite Tywin and of course burning Lord Rickard Stark alive and executing Brandon Stark. There are three things that I believe contributed to Eris' mental state. Firstly, I do not believe he was always mad, so I think it was the conditions around him in the tragic events like Summerhall, the death of many of his children, the death of his father at a young age, the death of his grandfather and uncle, the defiance of Duskendale, his rivalry with Tywin, all of this contributed to his mental state. But there are two other things that I think contributed heavily to his craziness as well. I do think that he had syphilis or some kind of pox, much like King Henry VIII from history. King Henry VIII's mistresses and wives had many miscarriages and stillbirths, much like Rayella. And also, King Henry was paranoid and had eavesdroppers everywhere, much like the conditions of Eris's court. But on top of this, I think there was another aspect. I think Ares was getting dreams from Bloodraven, dragon dreams. The last quote I read shows that Ares was obsessed with dragons, much like his grandfather before him. We know where that comes from. I did an entire video on that. I'll link it. But Ares seemed to do some things that seemed that he was aware of a much bigger problem building an additional wall in the north 100 leagues from the one that stands there already, becoming obsessed with dragon lore and wildfire. Then there's this quote about the year of the false spring. As the year drew to a close, winter returned to Westeros with a vengeance. On the last day of the year, snow began to fall upon King's Landing, and a crust of ice formed atop the Blackwater Rush. The snowfall continued off and on for the best part of a fortnight, by which time the Blackwater was hard frozen, and icicles draped the roofs and gutters of every tower in the city. As cold winds hammered the city, King Aerys II turned to his pyromancers charging them to drive the winter off with their magics. Huge green fires burned along the walls of the Red Keep for Moon's turn. The Mad King was trying to drive the winter off with magic and with wildfire. And that snowfall only lasted for two weeks. Maybe the wildfire actually worked. But the last hint that there may have been someone whispering to him in his dreams were the last words that he ever says. Burn them all. Could he have been talking about whites, weirwoods, or was he just insane and really wanted to burn every human being in King's Landing? What do you think? Was the Mad King truly mad or did he have help going crazy? I want to know what you think. As always, thanks for watching. 
Thanks to everyone that supports me on Patreon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and join the Sweet Summer family. Okay, my sweet summer children, have a good day.